Universal Studios are currently in the middle of a feasibility study to see if a potential theme park in Kempston Hardwick, Bedfordshire is possible, which means by 2030, this site might look very different, which is incredibly exciting. And when news like this breaks, which is not very often here in the UK, I mean, let's be honest, the last time we had, had any kind of inkling of something like this was the London Resort, and that was like 12 years ago, and everyone was very excited and our hearts were broken, and it's an ongoing saga, let's not go into it. But things are looking a lot more positive when it comes to Universal Studios. So people are having a lot of fun, throwing out ideas and speculation as to what could potentially land in this park and what it might look like. And we're in 2024. AI is a big deal. So why not combine the love for speculation with the internet's seemingly unhealthy love for AI and let's see if we can use the power of AI to see what Universal Studios Great Britain might look like. Something a little bit different today but it's fun to speculate, and there's gonna be a lot of speculation over the next few years, so long as Universal Studios decides to go ahead with this project. But before anything is announced, maybe it'd be fun to see if some of those ideas could come to life in six years' time. So let's dive right in with what ChatGPT could come up with. And the first one is probably something that is likely to come to fruition with the actual entrance plaza to Universal Studios Great Britain. Maybe not quite in this way. I mean, Universal Studios is spelt wrong. The globe is probably unlikely to be that close to the entrance arch or even in the plaza at all. Like the different resorts have that globe in different locations and at different styles. Uh, so will it be there? Will it be in City? What will it be in the park? Who knows? The the, uh, the leaked concept art that's over a year old apparently did show the globe in the center of the park in like a lagoon so it would be interesting to see if anything came of that or if it would be in the sort of the usual place in City Walk. I know in Beijing it was in City Walk so is that likely in Kempston Hard Hardwick? Possibly, possibly. Moving on to once we've walked through the turnstiles although obviously looking back down like the uh, the central boulevard area and it looks a little bit too neon for my liking and there's a hell of a lot of stalls uh, or seating areas with umbrellas down there but it could look a little bit something like this would they keep that kind of hollywood aesthetic or would they kind of go for a faux british thing i'm gonna lean towards the hollywood theme um, a li like kind of like Beijing as well. I can't uni see Universal straying too far from that design like they have done with Epic Universe, but then again, they already have Universal Studios in Orlando, so it makes sense to switch it up for uh, Epic Universe, but it, it makes sense for them not to do that for Beijing. And I'm kind of leaning towards the fact that they would probably do that for Great Britain as well. So here is the aforementioned globe in the middle of the central lagoon which doesn't look look a lot like that concept art whether it was real or not that was released um, and i think the ai has done a nice touch here with the tables down by the front it's very disney that maybe they could have some sort of dessert parties with this central fountain lagoon show uh, fighter pilot show that seems to be going on in the background there i mean whatever that is I'm here for it, and if we did have a central lagoon that looked a lot like that, I'd be, I'd be very happy. Although, you would think with Universal maybe moving towards uh, projection mapping shows at the moment, and with Universal Studios Great Britain being on the outskirts of a nature reserve, they're probably going to want to keep firework shows to a minimum, so would probably rely on projection. So, is this likely? I'm not sure, but this one was heavily influenced by that concept art, so that's why that one's included. Moving on to the first ride in my pre-AI envisaged Universal Studios Great Britain. And we have a ride in the form of one of the, the rumoured IPs that Universal are looking to acquire in Paddington Bear. Uh, and if you've seen the first movie, you'll know that it, evil Nicole Kidman was looking to kidnap Paddington to keep him as an exhibit. Uh, and so this one is set in a sort of... a, a, a reminiscent building uh, to the 
Natural History Museum in London, and it's Paddington's Hectic Museum Escape. Is it going to be called that? Is there even going to be one there? I don't know, I kind of hope so, because uh, you could imagine, moving on to the next image, uh, Paddington and his friends who were also dressed like Paddington for some reason, uh, in a, a black cab, because let's play up to the stereotypes of London, um, being whisked around trying to escape the Natural History Museum. There's no blue whale hanging from the ceiling, which is disappointing, and there's seemingly dinosaurs, and whatever that is on the left-hand side, some sort of hippo, bear, elephant, horrible creation, uh, and for some reason the security guards are applauding Paddington instead of chasing him, which I prompted the AI to do, but it's not too far off how I would imagine um, a Paddington ride to look anyway. Um, so yeah, that would be a nice family ride. Exciting scenes whisked around, maybe the vehicle spins, things like that. Think Snow White or uh, Winnie the Pooh in Magic Kingdom, something like that, but we'll see. And then moving on to another ride in a sort of a, a uh, nondescript area. It doesn't make sense to do a London area in Universal Studios Great Britain because London's down the road. Um, but to actually have the odd London bit in there kind of makes sense in my mind, similar to how the Bourne show is kind of just plonked there in Universal Studios Orlando. But here's another ride in that area. It's a, doc it's a Doctor Who themed ride. I know a lot of people are very keen to have a Doctor Who themed ride. And this one would be the Doctor's Battle across time and space, which is a little bit similar to the T2 battle through time and space, I think it was something like that, T2 3D, uh, but they're borrowing them from themselves in this case. So there's the entrance archway to the Doctor Who ride, and then guests go down a dark alley and are greeted with the TARDIS, and they will go through the TARDIS, through the queue, you know how Universal do immersive queues, kind of like that. It was really hard to actually generate the inside of a TARDIS, so I'm not going to show you that attempt. Um, and then uh, we, we aboard some TARDIS-themed ride vehicles and we get up to hijinks in space and time and whatnot. And this was the closest I could do um, with surrounding a ride vehicle with uh, Daleks. Um, it really didn't want to generate Daleks. It's quite difficult with AI to to do IP-based stuff, and this was the closest I could get. You can kind of get the gist that this is Doctor Who, right? Yeah, kind of. Uh, and then the third attraction that borrows from um, one of the rumored IPs, 007, License to Thrill. Do you see what I did there with that pun? It's, of course, a stunt show based on very similar technology to how the Bourne um, Identity stunt show is in Universal. The, the set pieces, the, the way that that show is put together is mind-boggling. It's everything that you want from a modern stunt show. And if they brought that over to Universal Studios Great Britain, but just basically reskinned it to be James Bond, and you can tell it's James Bond here because they're wearing suits and Big Ben is in the background. So that one would be a lot of fun, and I'm sure it would go down really well as well. It doesn't make sense for, for Bond to lend itself to a ride. I suppose it could be like a car chase type thing, but I don't really see that ha happening. It, the obvious choice would be for a stunt show. Everyone is seemingly in two minds about whether or not Harry Potter will come to Universal Studios. Harry Potter has seemingly been tarnished a little bit by the author's behaviours online. Um, so will that affect things? I mean, they are doing a new Harry Potter TV show over the next decade or so, so it doesn't seem like the popularity is waning anytime soon. The only stumbling blocks could potentially be that Universal don't want to recreate too many of the or any of the attractions from other parks. So does that mean we won't see a Hogsmeade and Hogwarts Castle? I mean, the theme is fine. We don't necessarily have to then duplicate the rides, but obviously Hogsmeade Village is a massive draw at basically every other park apart from Singapore, I believe. Uh, but we could we could still have the theme there, right? We, we could still have it. Would Warner Brothers allow it with the tour being like less than an hour away? I don't know, maybe, but if they did, this is probably what it would look like. And this was difficult to, to get AI to generate, honestly. Uh, and then we've got the castle itself. I mean, that's pretty bang on as to how it looks. So yeah, I, I could have just taken 
an image of any of the other Hogwarts castles around the world, but that wouldn't have been in the spirit of this video, would it? But instead of shoving a Forbidden Journey type ride in there, a Kuka arm ride, let's switch it up a little bit and use the same tech from Intamin as used in uh, the other park as used in uh, Escape from Gringotts. And let's just shove a Chamber of Secrets right in there where, I mean, there's a, there's a ready-made section in that second film, isn't there, when they're sliding down into the Chamber of Secrets. You could be met with a giant basilisk. There isn't one of those in Forbidden Journey. I mean, there's a skeleton, I suppose, but we could have the living real deal and you could imagine going through the queues and hearing the whispers and stuff. It kind of makes itself really, doesn't it? And it is the closest thing it could generate as to being in the Chamber of Secrets. For some reason, the basilisk up there has become track. Not quite sure how that works, but you kind of get, get the idea. And uh, for some reason, it says, hurry Chamber of Secrets on the back of the ride vehicle. So um, yeah, if Universal want to spell it that way, then I'm not opposed to it, in all honesty. Then a second major attraction in the Harry Potter area was a real struggle to get AI to generate. But I'm thinking a Quidditch themed roller coaster in a similar ride system to Hagrid's Magical Creatures Motorbike Adventure, in which two dueling coasters, two launch coasters, are zipping around the inside of a Quidditch stadium. So you can imagine queuing around the outside, seeing the vehicles do their thing. And the theme is you're both trying to chase the snitch. You're both, oh my God, I can't even remember. Snitch chasers, I can't remember what Harry is. Seekers, there we go. Oh my God, take away my geek card right now. And for some, yeah, AI really struggled to generate this. For some reason, people are on little toboggans riding down the stadium. I mean, if they want that to happen, fair enough. And there are eagles flying around. It, it's, it's reminiscent of a Quidditch stadium, but not quite. Because they still insist on making Fast and Furious movies, we're going to have to assume that there may be some sort of Fast and Furious presence at Universal Studios Great Britain. Hopefully it's not supercharged, because that is one hell of a bad ride. So here it is. Uh, it's a Fast and Furious roller coaster. It looks, for some reason, is generated it inside, or it's just really dark, I don't know. Uh, and this is another one where it kind of struggled to to generate something, maybe a Starfall Racers-esque racing coaster for this one. I mean, I know we've already got the dueling coaster in Hagrid's. It could just be like the new one going in at Hollywood. There's nothing to say that we won't get duplicate rides from Hollywood, although I don't really see us getting any kind of huge roller coasters at Universal Studios Great Britain. And I'll go into as to why in, in a, a later video, but this is kind of what a Fast and Furious roller coaster might look like fun times I suppose and then the last rumoured exclusive IP for Universal Studios Great Britain Hobbiton and I don't think this one would look too bad imagine a Pandora world of Avatar at Disney but more in the style of Hobbiton you could imagine that they could hide a show building behind those mountains couldn't they and there's limitless merchandise and experience possibilities. You could not not that it's in Hobbiton, but you could go into the Prancing Pony. You could do. You could go into Bilbo's house, etc. Just imagine, just imagine how that would look. And then we could have the entrance to a ride going in through one of the buildings. Here is Flight of the Great Eagles, because yes, in our Hobbiton, Gandalf summons the eagles at the start of the journey and saves us with that hassle of walking to Mordor. It's like, I couldn't even get the train. G Gandalf had, had access to eagles and he... Anyway, no, that's a, that's a different argument. And chat GPT really did have trouble generating what a flying theatre looked like. So here is aforementioned flight of the great eagles flying theatre. Um, I mean, I don't know what this is, but just imagine flight of passage, but you're on the back of an eagle, basically. <laughs> the second ride in the Lord of the Rings area would be a trip to Mordor using the Kuka arm technology, which AI really did have trouble uh, coping with how that might look um, and settled on a boat ride. And here is, um, well, I assume it's a boat ride. We've got some <laughs> little golem creature sitting on a rock while people 
peek around a corner and, and have a look at him. But just imagine this as a Harry Potter and the Forbidden Journey style ride system, zipping in and around Mordor and other iconic Lord of the Rings locales. I could imagine that being a banger of a ride and um, the thought of it excites me greatly. We can't have a Universal Studios Great Britain without Jurassic Park and here is what AI thinks the visitor centre would look like. Why it looks like that, I don't really know and can't imagine dinosaurs flying around. It's just dangerous really, isn't it, if nothing else. And we have, I mean, it's not done too bad a job with the inside of the visitor centre. Um, you've got, I, I tried to tell it to do one pathway to an aviary where there would be a similar roller coaster to the one in Beijing and then a different way uh, to the left would be the entrance to Jurassic World Adventure. Uh, it, it, I would envisage this as being one of the major indoor areas of the park. Um, if you've got two indoor rides and the aviary, you could probably do a lot with that just, just by sticking it all indoors, really. You don't need to have a Velocicoaster clone as nice as that would be, but yeah, I don't expect us to be seeing many hundred plus roller coasters at Universal Studios Great Britain. And here is what Jurassic World Adventure might look like. For some reason, everyone's facing that way, the lights are facing the other way. There is a lot of dinosaurs in there and some horrendous spider creature hanging from the ceiling. Remember the giant spider in Jurassic World? No, me neither, but the ride has one. And there's another scene. And for some reason, there's two dinosaurs fighting, three lines of vehicles, and then a crowd watching from the side. So I assume they're about to be eaten. It's, uh, it's a shame for them, but so long as they're having fun, that's all that matters. And then we can't have Universal Studios without something for the kids. And I managed to generate something Minion-esque in this one. I asked for a Minion flat ride to go in an indoor area, and it has seemingly generated Alien Encounter, but with Minions. And I feel like that would be scarier than the actual Alien Encounter. Um, which, yeah, I mean, it looks fun, it's colourful and it's joined by the indoor area itself. Looks a lot different to the kind of blandness that is in the Beijing one. So whatever they come up with, I'm sure we'll all go on it and enjoy it. And so long as it's not Minion Mayhem, which another ride they've removed the 3D from for some reason, it's all good. And then we have a Minions roller coaster, which yeah, looks like one of those toboggan coasters that you see at the fair. And I assume Universal's gonna have a slightly bigger budget. <laughs> that but we will see i don't know if this one's gonna happen there's not been any mutings about it online but super nintendo well this one looks a lot different it was really difficult to generate something mario-esque without using the word mario so i settled on super plumber man it got the gist it's luigi i mean it's second best so maybe we'll call it super luigi land or something like that a lot of mushrooms a lot of pipes a lot of mayhem going on there and we've got Peach's Castle and Bowser. It's not terrible, you, you get the gist of what that is, right? And for some reason, Kirby's there. Um, I mean, whatever, let's go for it. Let's embrace the madness. And a, uh, a Mario or Luigi, as the case may be, jumping drop tower. Like you could imagine a small drop tower doing the Mario jump sound effect as it bounced up and down, right? I mean, I can, there we go. Right, let's move on, let's move away from the park and we're gonna, we're gonna envisage the park opening with two hotels. The first is a in-park hotel, which sort of adjoins City Walk a little bit. It's, uh, it's the Royal Britannia Hotel. This is our luxury accommodation. As you can see, it's got towers and everything and big roller coasters in the background and a lovely big regal lobby area with lots of identical twins running the bar slash reception area. I mean, that looks nice. I'd stay there. But we also need some, uh, some more budget accommodation in the form of Hardwick Hotel, of course, calling back to Kempston Hardwick, which will probably more or less cease to be once uh, Universal Studios engulfs the entire village. This one sort of evokes Cabana Bay a little bit. And uh, here's the inside of the lobby there. Very bright and colorful, 50s aesthetic. I'm not sure it exactly looked like that, but I was using that as the inspiration and the AI totally went for it. Uh, and it's gonna have a small indoor water park. It feels like 
there would need to be something in there and I'm thinking something along the same sort of scale as Alton Towers Water Park. So nothing massive, nothing, certainly nothing Volcano Bay scale, but something smaller for uh, guests who are staying a few nights just to keep them entertained if they don't want to be in the theme park itself. And of course it has to be undercover because brr it's cold in the UK. Moving on to City Walk, uh, it's all quite cramped according to AI. Not sure about that, but we've got Greg's Bakery, Nando's. We've got several Greg's Bakeries and Nando's by the looks of it. There's some in the background there as well. I assume it would be quite popular in Universal Studios Great Britain. If, it, if it's indeed there, I would be quite surprised and a little bit sad if it wasn't. Uh, but I tried to do it again. We've got a cowfish in there. There's uh, more Nando's. There's a sports bar. There's two Nando's in there, two Greg's, and a Universal Studio store. I mean, I'm here for it. I'm not opposed to having, you know, four or five Nando's. And um, because Comcast owns Sky, and I'm thinking of NBC Grill Brew, Sports Grill Brew at City Walk in Orlando. I'm thinking a Sky Sports sports bar is a shoe in That's got to happen. And look at all the screens and the Sky Sports logos and the booze. And it would be it would be nice. I'm not sure what that sofa is pointing at and why it's pointing at that one table where that couple are going to sit having date night. But, um, you know, if they want to be stared at whilst enjoying a good time, that's up to them, isn't it, really? And then we've got the new Kempston Hardwick slash Stuart B amalgamation station which is the thing I've just come up with on the spot for it now but some of the plans are, uh, are sort of saying that they're going to get rid of those two stations and create a new station which would peek a little bit onto the Universal Studios Great Britain land and this is kind of what I <laughs> AI thinks it would look like probably a lot grander than um, any of the other stations on the Marston Vale line I mean I definitely know it is there is a Captain Tom bench on one of the other ones but you know we'll gloss over that and that's pretty much it uh, I did ask it to generate one final image and that was what a possible mascot could look like for Universal Studios Great Britain and here he is a very colorful beef eater British bear which yeah the, is the BBB the beef eater British bear and he's having a great time um, and being watched by whatever the hell that red creature is in the background. So yeah, hope that one doesn't sit with you in your nightmares for too long. So, what do you think? Are any of these AI predictions likely to come to fruition? When, and hopefully when, Universal Studios Great Britain opens around 2030? Let me know in the comments if you agree with any of these ideas, if there's something else you'd like to see and to tune in to updates that aren't AI-generated madness in the future, please subscribe to Universal Studios Great Britain updates, and I'll see you in the next video with a lot less of this guy.